uh, about Niharika, she is a machine learning engineer at TC, uh, TCS, and uh, she develops NLP-based solutions for Walmart, US, and uh, she believes in leveraging artificial intelligence to help people lead better lives. And her talk at PyCon uh, Canada 2019 focused on one such research project, Auti Glove, for autistic people autistic children. So when not at work, Niharika actively contributes to Python community as a tech speaker, mentor and organizer. And of course, she leads the PyLadies chapter in Chennai. So uh, thanks a lot, uh, Niharika, for uh, for uh, agreeing to deliver the session. So uh, she has been a speed mentor as well in PyCon, uh, PyCon 2019 uh, regarding uh, regarding the same topic, winning your way through tech grants and conferences. So enjoy. So Thank Niharika, you. over to you. Thanks, Manasuni. Thanks for that introduction. Um, all right, I think we can get started. So basically, uh, yeah, so we, I'm going to be talking about winning your way through tech conferences and grants. And just a disclaimer, so all of these tips are either pre-COVID days or post-COVID days. These are not winning your way through tech conferences in a virtual format. So these are all my experiences which I have learned throughout my uh, two years of conference journey and what happens when you have physical conferences, right? So just a brief introduction, I think Manasini has covered most of it. Um, so for, uh, I currently work at TCS. I also you know, organize the Pilate Chennai meetups. And um, having spoken at various um, conferences like PyCon India, PyCon 2019 Canada, and you know, virtual conference of Pi Ohio. Um, so I'm no expert, but I have definitely, uh, conferences have helped me uh, you know, kind of uh, helped me in both my personal and professional life. And it has actually helped me move from an attendee to a volunteer, to a mentor, to an organizer, to a speaker. And, and it's been a great uh, journey. And I would like to sh not kind of share that to you along with uh, tips and tricks of how you can make the most of tech conferences. So when I started attending tech conferences, it was, it was uh, probably new for me and for people around me. So a lot of things I learned, a lot of things I made mistakes, a lot of things I learned after the end of the conference what I should do. So I hope uh, through this you will be able to just um, kind of analyze how your conference was the last two days and probably make the best use of it in the next conference, right? So I have a question for all of you who are there here and uh, right now I'm not able to see your chat but if you can just put it up there. So I just want to uh, see in brief, uh, is this your first conference, uh, PyCon India 2020? So it, it will kind of be a very apt for all of you if this is your first conference. So just put it up on chat, yes, no. And if it is no, um, then you know probably is it your second conference, third conference, or have you attended other conferences before, right? So I have two questions for you. So this is the first one. Uh, and for those of you who have answered yes, that this is your first conference, then what uh, I'm going to show you what exactly conferences look like, right? So this is a picture from PyCon India 2019, which happened in Chennai last year. Uh, this is how exactly tech conferences look. Okay, you will have huge auditorium of people, and it's 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 kind of an experience in itself. So uh, just so this brings me to my next question as to why do you attend a conference? So for all those, uh, all of you here are attending this conference, uh, although it is virtual. So what pushed you to attend this conference? Um, was it was it a colleague who introduced you to this? Was it your friend circle? Because everybody around you is attending. Are you attending because you uh, like the talks which are scheduled? You like the sessions and you want to learn more? So this is my second question to all of you who are there in the uh, session, that why do you attend uh, a tech conference, what are your reasons? So with this in mind and with my journey, so there are a lot of pictures which I've kind of put in to kind of make this personal since I was told it's going to be an experience sharing. So it's my literally my experience is out there for you to see. So the first thing which we need to uh, do, so there are three aspects to my whole talk today. One is how can you make the most of the conference you're currently attending? Uh, how can you write talk proposals which uh, you know which get selected or uh, how you can basically go and uh, write a convincing talk proposal and let's say you're giving a talk outside India so most of the conferences in India you can pretty much travel to another another state but when I had to travel to PyCon Canada to Toronto to attend uh, it, it definitely is a burden uh, a financial burden right from visa to you know the exp uh, the expenditure the financial the flight tickets all of that so a lot of conferences with grants so we'll also be touching on um how you can uh, how can you find out about grants what can you do how to get 
provide a successful brand. So what do you want out of conference? So I think, yes, so these are all the different reasons. Uh, I can just go through it one by one. Uh, one is the primary thing of conference is there are all technical talks, right? So first is you need to actually figure out what kind of conference you want to go to. There are a lot many conferences happening. Uh, you have uh, te technology-based conferences, you have company-sponsored conferences, you have seminars, meetups. So you need to focus on uh, are you so if I'm since I am working in Python since I prefer uh, to I want to expand my knowledge in Python so Python was the best fit. So to expand one's knowledge to learn what's new out there you can uh, learn about a new let's say you're working on a business problem or you're working on a project and you find a talk session which is very similar to that and you want to know how they have solved the problem right so that is one main reason why what do you want to get out of uh, you know a conference. So these points are very important uh, to the next thing which I'm going to talk about is how can you efficiently efficiently manage time. So what really happens is um, if you are focused on expanding your knowledge, then the sessions which happen, the keynotes which happen are your like you know go to place. You, you kind of have to put all your effort, all your focus, all your time um, to take notes, to attend these sessions, to plan out your schedule. But if you're going to attend conferences to make connections, uh, to just to network, to know more people, I think hanging out around the conferences, the booths, the uh, you know company booths, or the networking areas, or the open spaces are your way to go. If you want to, let's say, find a job, if you want to look for an internship, you 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 are if your focus is that, then I think uh, you know uh, spending more time on uh, visiting uh, the company booths or the sponsor booths and and uh, talking to people, talking to mentors will will be the way to best utilize your time in those two days, right? So, so you need to figure out before the conference as to why am I attending it? What is it that I'm expecting out of a conference? And if you are attending it for conference lab, so this is something which I think all college students probably might be on top of their bucket list that, oh, I'm going to get a lot of conference lab. No. Um, I think swag shouldn't be the only reason why you are, or the main reason why you are attending a conference. So just uh, try to, since you're going to spend two days, uh, try to understand why do you, what do you want out of these conferences, right? So the next few slides are going to be my PyCon journey. So when I started, it was in the year 2018, and you can just see a very curious me standing um, alongside my, uh, you know, my college uh, mate and all of us, and learning about uh, speak, seeing, hearing, understanding what. Uh, what the community is about. So I was new. I did not know anybody. I did not know anyone. I had traveled from Chennai to Hyderabad along with my four uh, college friends just in order to attend the conference. So everything was new. And this is what I was facing with. So by India 2018, I was a first time attendee. And when I entered, these were all the things which uh, a conference, you know, kind of offered you. Technical talks, lighting talks, keynotes, job board, so they give you a whole big schedule, you have chapter boots, you have company boots, you have quizzes which are going on in between these sessions. So one tells you come to a booth at 2 o'clock, the other one tells you come to a booth at 4 o'clock. There are, you know, open spaces, workshops, so so um, it, it's, it's very easy to get kind of intimidated and not knowing what to do, where to do. So this is where uh, what happens is uh, the first thing which you need to do is kind of manage your time, you know. When you get your schedule and you go through, in fact, the schedules are put up way before in the website. Uh, so what you should do is kind of plan your schedule because all talks happen parallelly. So most of the times they kind of happen parallelly. So even in PyCon India, which you saw. So you need to kind of figure out what are your must-see talks. So if, are they related to your current job project? Um, are they really interesting or something which I want to, I may not know a lot about it, but it's a good beginner level talk and I kind of want to know. So there are two kinds of talks, must-see talks, and you can see those talks if you have time, right? So the reason why you're doing this is because when you have must-see talks, you find or you make sure you are right out there, attend the talk, and the can-see talks uh, are where you can probably venture out, may not attend those talks because you're not, it's not in line of your interest, and try and you know navigate through the other uh, aspects of the conferences. The second one is the company booths. So the picture which you saw, uh, kind of, uh, you know, so there are a lot of company booths uh, which are out there, or uh, let's say chapter booths. So when there is a break, you have your entire thousand to thousand attendees of the conference coming in, uh, you know, come out and interact with everybody. So if you are the person whose uh, reason of you know attending a conference is to let's say find a job or find a, find an internship, 
you would need to kind of sacrifice a few talks and attend these booths or talk to the people in these booths when um, you know when uh, when the talks are going on because that is the time you can actually save once you can save a lot of time in talking and even the person who is there at the company booth can actually give you his time and listen to you and have more meaningful discussions so this is something which i think uh, in my first time of attendee i was like all over it but probably the second and third time is where you understand uh, how you can you know make the best use of the contracts so this is just my own personal tip obviously all of you uh, your best to try, you know see what works for you uh, but this is what i uh, experienced during my python journey and obviously yes so you can always meet people join group discussions you know using breaks um, and these are the best time to network so just explaining to you this is again a screenshot of python india 2019 in chennai so if you see uh, you know there are so many booths and so many people out here so this must be probably one of the time when there are no talks going on so it's it's uh, you know so you kind of need to figure out where you need to be when and and then make the best use of these conferences so the next one which comes is um, so as a student so when i attended my first uh, thing I, i was a student right so i was like how can why would somebody listen to me or uh, what will i want to talk to them i just started working on data science machine learning projects so the best thing about um, this is about the conferences at least by point is basically all of you have badges so there are different attendee badges there are volunteer badges there are mentor badges So this was something which I really liked that you know there are some people who roam around with mentor I can mentor right or you know or so it's it's really easy to um, let's say to reach out to them and or just discuss with anybody you're talking to somebody and you're saying you're working on this project and this is where I'm stuck so this personally this happened to me so my uh, since I was in my final year of under graduation uh, I was working on a major project idea and I was uh, me and my friend so we were kind of having various approaches of how to do. so we were discussing this with one person and then that person reached you know connected us with another mentor um, uh, whose name is saptak and he uh, he has done something similar in during his undergrad days and gave us a you know very good approach and kind of gave a lot of insights as to how we can go about it so when i said it is a you know python helps me in a very personal journey is because that topic that major project went on to become my top proposal for python canada so it 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 helped me to um, you know take it from ideation to the entire uh, finalizing and you know actually doing that project so the best thing how to network is um, you know you can reach out to a speaker after a talk you can obviously ask sensible queries uh, you should always prepare some conversation starters and and the last part especially is you know exit at the right time so sometimes you are kind of stuck in an awkward situation when you have other things to do and um you know uh, and the discussions keep going on so you should try and manage your time effectively and try to reach out to people at the right time right so the next thing which i have seen uh, which which was even new to me and uh, which i kind of asked a lot of people is what to talk why would somebody listen to me so or um so especially for students uh, this is kind of thing i'm just a fresher so what to talk is basically what to talk in a company booth or a, a responsible booth and why would they hire me why should they listen to what i'm doing so one thing which i realized is uh, i think elevator pitch uh, concept is something which really works so for those of you who don't know you know elevator pitch is basically a 30 second uh, thing about who you are what are you working on where are you uh, you know which college or which company are you working for what is it something about unique about you and what is it that you're expecting out of this 30 seconds after this 30 seconds so probably you can ask about ask sensible queries ask for good questions all of those so it's it's very since conferences are the place to you know network and to talk you feel free to you know ask about let's say there are if there are openings in your company or if um if you can connect so i think linkedin um always so this is something which i have a tip for myself uh, after every conversation which let's say exceeds more than 5 minutes i make it a point to either connect or 5 to 10 minutes i make it a point to connect with that person either on linkedin or twitter or send a personalized request uh because we we had meaningful conversations and obviously you can't uh, spend hours and hours talking to that person in the conference but you can obviously catch up after the conference right so this is the next part so after the conference so i think uh, so a lot of times what happens is um, so you have two days of conference and then you just shut shop right so that's not how it, uh, that um, 
you know, so actually after conference is as important as what you do during the conference and before the conference. So following up, reaching out to people on LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, collaborating on projects. So the mentor whom I told you, so we kind of, you uh, know, uh, collaborated with him, kind of took his uh, opinion, took his advice throughout our entire uh, final semester when we were working on our uh, project. So it, it helps you to, you know, make connections. It helps you to gain insights. And um, so you can put it up on LinkedIn, you can put it up on social media. And uh, this is probably the community, this is 2018 was the place where, um, you know, which you can basically see. Um, you know, so what you see here is what I meant by reach out on LinkedIn and Twitter. So, so in 2018, there was this really awesome concept of job board. Uh, so where, um, you know, uh, all, all people who were attending were putting up their names or their email IDs and uh, if they are actively hiring or not. So this is just one such example. So you can either collaborate on projects after conference. If you're looking out for jobs or internships, you can always reach out. So this is just a student me who went a uh, Bursec and uh, uh, reached out to everybody application for internship because I found out them, you know, uh, through them in job board. And I was, and to my surprise, I actually converted, uh, you know, a few of these applications into internships, which is what is my personal outcome of, you know, attending a conference. So when somebody asks me, why do you, uh, why do you have to go and why do you have to attend a conference? What is it? It's just, uh, you're just going to attend talks. So this one conference was a really eye opener for me. And uh, so I pledged to give it back um, in, to the community by creating the Pilates Chennai community since we didn't have one in Chennai. And this, the, you know, such conferences basically, like Manaswini said in her previous talk, it helps you increase your peer group, the right kind of peer group who talk about tech, who talk about the field you're interested in and who work on projects which you are interested in. And, so one thing leads to another. Pilates Chennai led to meetups. Uh, it led to me getting introduced to the Python community and to all Chennai Pi uh, team and to a lot, a lot of other people who are already actively uh, participating uh, in this Python community and giving back to the community, right? So after this, um, so the next, uh, you know, this was kind of uh, the you know major thing where which really helped me to get into the whole thing. And then there are. Uh, PyCon India 2019 was, uh, you know, so, uh, it helped me organize BTRB on the other side of the conference, help present my own poster. So I still had, um, I was still not very confident of submitting a talk. So I ended up presenting a poster. And then I ended up, you know, giving the same, uh, the same thing, which basically the Saptak helped me, my major project, uh, ended up becoming my talk proposal for the PyCon Canada. And, um, so what you see is basically uh, in one year, it, things really changed for me because of how conferences and how you can basically make the best use of them. So now I come back to the last uh, two things of, um, you know, the two of the talk, basically how can you write a successful talk proposal and how do you apply for grants? So, so the main thing about call for proposal is, so this was again something which I only got to know after the after the first conference is there is something called call for proposals. And it usually opens, let's say, months before the actual conference. So a lot of us don't don't know about the timeline. So it's, it's very important. So if you know that there's a conference that's happening six months later, this is the right time to submit a talk proposal. So know your time frame, stick to your de deadlines, and it's easier to, and it's better to submit early. So a lot of times, uh, teams give feedback. So wherever whichever conference you submit to, they kind of give feedback. If something is missing, they reach out to you. So so always do that. And the first thing of you know writing a, a proposal is basically you should need to finalize the talk topic, and not just any talk topic. You know you need to be um, you know uh, thorough in it. You need to know it in and out. You need to do your research, and it is something that you have worked on because you want to talk about it. So people think you are subject matter experts in that, and you are going to talk about it. So is it relevant? So this is the last question. This is the question which you always have to attend. If this topic is basically there in the conference schedule and you are an attendee, would you attend it? So if the answer is no, I think you need to, you know, revisit your proposal and uh, go through it once again, right? So then what you need to do is decide on whether you want to give a beginner level talk, an intermediate, advanced level. So is this fit enough for an advanced level talk? Am I uh, confident enough to talk about this topic or this algorithm or this new tool which I have built? And this is the next top. The next line is basically something which um, 
I have seen from my experience as a CFP reviewer last year is do not repeat talks if your audience is going to be the same. So if you are, let's say, talking at PyLady Chennai meetups and you are also talking at Chennai Py meetups and PyCon India is also happening in Chennai and you're going to repeat the same talk everywhere. So, so even for a person who's reviewing or let's say, or any person, so if your audience is going to be the same and they already know and they've already heard your talk previously, so it's best practice to not repeat the same talks, um, um, you know, at, a, at different places, right? And the last one is my own personal tip that um, I personally love to attend talks which are application oriented. So I have used Scikit-learn to do something, right? Or I have used this tool or this package to build something new. So rather than explaining to me what uh, how it works or what it is. So this is just my personal view that if they are, if they are application oriented, where you have used it to build something amazing, then I would definitely be the first person to listen to your talk. So the next one is when you actually submit a proposal, what all do they require? So they require main things. So whether they ask for it or not, whether generally CFPs have a, a structure. So they, they kind of give you what, what they need. They need, a, they need a talk title, they need description, they need outcomes. So, but even if they don't, uh, the right practice is to basically have a very inquisitive topic, a very uh, interesting talk, let's say title. And the description, um, you know, kind of make it elaborate. So a lot of times, a lot of proposals which I have seen, uh, which, uh, which are there in the public forum is probably the description is just three, four lines. So for a person who's reviewing, he won't know what you're exactly, why would somebody, uh, why should he give 30 minutes of his conference schedule to your talk, right? So you need to make it elaborate as to, as to why are you doing this? Uh, so there are three questions. Uh, what is the talk about? Why somebody needs to hear your talk? And what are you going to cover in that talk and how your talk is going to impact uh, the audience who's going to attend it right and um, and also split so if you're going to talk for 25 minutes it, it's it's really nice if the organizers can see how you're going to structure your 25 minutes how are you going to start what are you going to focus on what is your main points of focus so a time split of your talk will really help in making the organizers or um, be more confident about your talk and the key objectives and the audience takeaways are something which uh, which are really helpful because uh, you're telling them what the audience is going to learn from your talk. So, and the next one is basically practice, practice, practice. So I think this is something which is, um, you know, uh, just before the talk, which, which you need to do. So, uh, so when I had to give my talk, I had, um, you know, done my major project reviews. I had three reviews in college. I went and did a poster presentation. I, went, I spammed my family and friends, gave them my talks. And then eventually, so this basically helps you improvise, get feedback. Um, somebody will have some opinion about what they understood, what they didn't understand. So that will help you to, um, you know, uh, improvise on how you present and what is it that you're going to present about. So uh, last year, so I have this example, uh, how I hand coded machine learning algorithm from scratch. So this is a talk proposal. I'm just going to share you the screenshot of a person called Arjun Katoria. So I was going through all the proposals and of last year, and this was one of the proposals which really caught my eye. So I will definitely you know, kind of share the link so, um, to all of you. So it's, it's there in the public forum. So if you, the way he structured his uh, talk proposal, uh, the way it was written, so I think uh, he did speak in last year's conference, but this is something uh, where I always take inspiration from when I talk, uh, when I write my own talk proposals as to um, how we can write a convincing talk proposal. So if you see about the agenda, the the word, the outcome, the outline. So I think it's it's perfect, right? So for all of you who want to just uh, you know get to know, you can always um, go into this. So the last thing which we're going to cover today is basically uh, how to write a convincing grant pro proposal, right? So um, some conference tickets are something which you can always. Um, you know, uh, which you can sponsor yourself. Uh, but what happens if you are talking at a conference which is not in your country? Okay, uh, or let's say even if there are conference, some conference tickets are let's say a lot more than your budget. So the different ways. Um, one is again, you have some conferences give you monetary aid. Some grants, uh, some conferences give you grants. They give you ticket grants. They sponsor your ticket. So the first thing is you need to just kind of find out whether the conference is giving certain financial aid. And if they are, then how do I go about it? And even if they're not, it's 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 good practice to kind of mail them and ask them what they're doing. And 
Uh, if not, then there are also other organizations which help sponsor you, right? So there are, uh, for example, Grace of a Conference. So I think every company out there uh, sponsors uh, attendees of Grace Hopper. So you have Google, Facebook, Microsoft attending. So similar to CFP, you should know your time frame of when to apply for a grant and you know review the guidelines, whether they require a cover letter, they require recommendations, what it is. So, and then uh, basically what you do, uh, what you need to do in your grant is it's kind of, you know, it's, it's very similar to how you write your statement of purpose. You need to convince the other person as to why they should fund you. So what you can basically write, let's say if it's a Python conference, right? How do you use Python? What do you want? Uh, what do you want to you know get out of the conference? Why, if you attend, let's say Python India, what is it that you're expecting out of it? And once you do attend, how is it that you're going to give back to the community? And um, how is it that this financial aid? How you can make use of it? And and it's very important to write um, in in a way that it convinces that person that okay, you are a person who is worthy of giving a financial aid for. Right, so, and you need to kind of customize it for every conference, not that you have a generic template and you send it out to multiple conferences. So the main part what you need to focus is what do you want to get out of the conference and how do you use Python and how you attending the conference is going to help you as well as the conference organizers. Right, so I think that is something which, so it's basically an essay or a cover letter and it's kind of like a purpose as to why you want to attend and why should they fund you. So just a brief, uh, so when I had written my grant proposal for Canada, so I had, you know, it's, it, I had gone back and seen about the previous versions and since I was talking about a topic which was for autistic children, so I find I found a link where PyCon Canada had actually supported some autism speech or if you have, had supported a, a group like that previously in the year 2015. So I had pulled that out and kind of added it to uh, this and sort of tried to make it more relevant, right? So these are the just a few tips as to what worked for me and I hope it works for you and um, I hope you make the most of your next tech conference. Thank you. Thanks a lot Niharika.